five minutes after 10 o'clock, one, one of the benefits we have of doing talk shows or, or even just listening to talk shows is that when you have an expert talking about something, you get to hear how it's pronounced. And the first time I saw the word gluten, I thought somebody misspelled the word glutton. <laughs> right, that's easy. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but when I first heard about gluten, I thought to myself, well, I don't, do I eat anything with gluten? I don't even know what gluten is. I, d I had no clue what it was, right? Well, anyway, so as time passed on, I said, okay, so you have to eat, what, what are they telling us to eat? Whole wheat bread? Is that what, is that yeah. what the new thing is? It's, no, it turns out there's gluten in that too. So what are they, and, and it turns out it's like everything. <laughs> it's like everything they told you. <laughs> and you and you think, well, how come I'm, I don't remember my grandmother worrying about this. How, how come they always say people in France have lots of bread? People in Italy have lots of bread, it, and they, then, they're not fat, and they don't have these allergic reactions. And and then we had a lady on, and she was saying, and I actually asked her this question, and I don't remember who she was or what her her area of expertise was, but she basically said, well, you know, gluten is really only a problem for a small segment of the population who happen to be allergic to it. And then, of course, people would disagree with that as well. So finally, there's a book to help us understand this. It's called Grain of Truth. It is written by Stephen Yaffa. He is, in addition to being very knowledgeable about this, mm -hmm. a playwright, a movie writer, right? He writes, uh, let's see, he's an award-winning screenwriter. He's worked for MGM, Paramount, Columbia, those studios. Michael Douglas, who I think is a studio all unto himself, you, you told me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's an investigative cool, yeah. journalist, which might explain this, this project here. He's a contributor to Salon. Playboy, which I just want to be a fly on the wall. Uh, uh, details, Rolling Stone, The Rotarian, The San Francisco Chronicle. Anyway, I won't read all of them, but he's got a list, a load of credentials. Uh, Grain of Truth, the real case for and against wheat and gluten. Let's find out what's so good or so bad about gluten. Stephen Yaffa, good morning, Stephen. Hey, it's a pleasure. Hi. Where are you? Are you in San Francisco? I am. I'm north of San Francisco, just about 20 minutes in Mill Valley in Marin in Marin County. Oh my goodness! Have you been with us before? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, I just you sound familiar. Well, thank you for being on the air and for getting up early out on the West Coast to do this. Uh, my pleasure, Larry. So, let's see. Do I need to worry about gluten? I don't seem to have any allergy to it. Do I need to worry about it? Uh, no. If you needed to worry about gluten, you would you would have known a long time ago. Um, and you're one of the 94 percent of us who really doesn't have an issue. Maybe 93 percent, if you include people with a really severe autoimmune uh, reaction to gluten called celiac disease, which can uh, be di uh, very accurately diagnosed. But that's really less than one percent of us. There are about six percent of us at most from clinical studies, which are pretty uh, intense these days in terms of how accurate they are. At the most, there are 6% of us who might have a reaction to a non-celiac, what's called non-celiac gluten sensitivity, but that figure uh, is really about self-reported reactions, and it goes all the way down to 0.63%. So you can see we're at the bottom of the percentage scale there. Okay. But still, if you have, I mean, it, it's like when you go to any any place that sells peanuts, there's always a warning. If you have a peanut allergy, be aware that we use peanuts here. So even though there's not peanuts in your ice cream sundae, whatever, it's it was made near it, and, and those people need to be afraid, correct? Or need to be aware anyway. Oh, ab absolutely. I, I, I don't diminish the, the problem that's uh, uh, that uh, gluten molecule, which, by the way, is made up of two proteins um, in, in the seed called the gliadin and glutenin. They give the rise to bread so that when you have a bread with a dome on it, the reason it, 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 has, it rises in the oven has only to do with those two proteins that trap air and oh, really? air, air bubbles. Yeah, that's really what, what it's all about just in terms of, of, of the ba why bakers you know, go to it. And there's really no substitute. So if you're eating gluten-free bread, you're not going to get those, that, that kind of performance. Okay, so, so while one school of thought says we're overdoing the warning thing, mm -hmm. the other school of thought says, yeah, but you got a few people who need to have that warning. So I don't have a problem with it being on the label. I mean, it makes no, no difference to me. Um, if if no, it I saves somebody from agony... I, I, I agree with that entirely, but on the other hand, Larry, when you go into a store and you see that there's gluten-free dog food, gluten-free shampoo, <laughs> <and nail polish. laughs> Okay, right. I didn't realize that. 
Uh, you know, yeah. we, you know, let's have that conversation about you know all the craziness that's gone on in terms of marketing because it's 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 so disproportionate to the number of us who actually have a, an issue with gluten. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So, but bread is good for you, right? I, I when they, when they said bread was bad for, I stopped eating bread. I said, gosh, you know, I yeah. kind of miss a good. I, I don't mean like Wonder Bread. Well. When you read my book, you'll find out that sourdough bread is really fabulously good for your nutrition, and sourdough bread is long fermented. When you're buying bread off the shelf in a grocery store and it's white or it just says whole wheat on it, it's going to shoot sugar into your bloodstream at a fairly fast rate because the the um, there's really a very little to prevent that uh, conversion of starch to sugar. But when you start eating in sourdough, which is made by local artisan bakers, now really all around the country, including where you are, if somebody's willing to go, you know, check it out. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally different experience, and your body really responds to it favorably. And you def- be- definitely are, you know, no need for us if, if we're not, um, you know, severely a reaction, if we don't have a severe allergy to, to, to gluten, there's no need for us to give up bread. It's just a question of being smart about what kind you eat. But does age matter? Because when you're a, a child, you're running all over the place, you're eating an astronomical amount of food, uh, uh, good food, not not just, you know, candy bars and, and snacks yeah. like that. But then as you age and you get into your mid-20s, that seems that your body chemistry is changing. So is it okay for uh, children, say, up to that age to have things with gluten in it and everything? You know, Robin, I really can't answer that question because I don't give medical advice. And the answer is I, oh. I honestly don't know how age affects this. All my research is pretty much done with adults, and I think if anybody wants to know, they, they, they should ask their pediatrician. Oh, okay. All right, so um, the, the point of the book, however, is to um, make a case for and against wheat and gluten. So what's, what's the against part? Um, the, a good question. The against is that if you have any kind of an allergic reaction, you should really check out whether or not gluten is responsible. And the best way to do that, obviously, is to eliminate the, um, you know, the most obvious cause of that, which would be anything with um, wheat in it. And um, if you do, in fact, find that you're, you've got an allergic reaction, um, it's probably because the gluten is, is creating some kind of minor, probably minor inflammation, which is, um, you know, comes out in terms of potentially fatigue, even um, joint a- aches and bloating, which is the three most common symptoms even if you don't have celiac disease. And if that's true, um, you know, by the way, it could be something else entirely different that creates some of those same uh, symptoms, which is um, undissolved uh, carbs in your large intestine. So it's a tricky area. But if you definitely feel that, you you know, you're reacting to gluten, you know, my advice is is really to stay away from it, you know. But I have to say, on the other hand, when a guy like William Davis in Wheat Belly tells us that wheat has killed more people than all the wars on earth combined, I think that's a huge overstatement. And I think this, that the fad of not eating gluten far exceeds its, its uh, real effects. When we go to f- to, to dine at uh, different uh, food establishments, one establishment might say they're from India, the other one we might say from Italy, from France. That's right. No. <laughs> uh, are they Americanized where you're not really getting the genuine food from that country? And is there a difference between if, if you go over to that country and eat that same dish over there than over here? Good question. Uh, I can't tell you how many people in the course of the two years I've, I've done this have come back and said, Stephen, you know, I ate pasta in Italy. By the way, I put pasta in my book, and uh, I explain this at some length. Uh, uh, but the, uh, the essence of the question is very simple. How come I didn't uh, react to pasta in Italy and I react to it here? Which I think is somewhat what you're, kind of thing you're asking me, Robin. And the answer is, um, it's really about the processing, you know. It's it's to some degree it's about the wheat because it has l- probably less gluten in it in European countries. But by and large, if uh, you're processing it using older methods, stone ground mes- methods, if you're eating smaller proportion portions, which you do in Italy, and it's served al dente, which it is, you're really helping your body digest that uh, much more comfortably than when you have a huge. A serving in front of you, which is the, kind of the American way, and the spaghetti has been, pasta has been cooked 
uh, to an inch of its life, you're creating exactly the wrong dynamics for your in, your digestive system to handle it comfortably. Yeah, what is egg noodles? What are, what are egg noodles? Yeah. Egg noodles seem I to get them. mushy really quick. Mm-hmm. Like you can I boil. Like when when I, I had a friend who liked uh, spaghetti al, al dente, the word you said, al dente, whatever yeah. it is, that's hard to do. I mean, you got to get it right at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one way they do it, but you can look this up on the internet, as soon as it starts to boil, just turn off the turn off the water and, and wait about six or seven minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. And, and what, is, uh, what is egg noodles? What is that? Um, egg noodles are uh, a totally different species. You could probably have an endless amount of those and probably grow a bit fat if you have enough of them, but you're not going to have a gluten issue. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Because they're made out of something different? Yeah, they're made out of, they're made out of um, egg, and uh, egg. I'm not sure what the flour is. Yeah, I think... Uh, by the way, I think that's true, but I, I'm, I'm not 100% true on that because I hadn't been asked an egg noodle question before. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> well, you, the only reason I thought of it is because of al dente, the al dente statement because yeah. when I was first trying to cook, <laughs> I, I made so many mistakes, and, and I, I put egg noodles in there, and I just walked away, and I came back, uh-huh. and it was a pile of goo. <laughs> Yeah, they have a very short lifespan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but spaghetti can last a lot longer in the boiling water. Uh, all right, so let's take a little break, and we'll be right back. This is a fascinating topic. Who knew? Uh, Grain of Truth is the title of the book that Stephen has written. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly? It's Yafa? You are indeed, Larry. Okay. Yep. And the book can be found at grainoftruthbook.com and on Amazon. Okay, and we'll ask that again, but don't go away because I want to continue this. And we'll be uh, right back at, after the weather and everything else. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, times of clouds and sun. With a shower or thunderstorm in spots, the high 85 to 89. The partly cloudy tonight, though 68 to 72. Tomorrow, intervals of clouds and sun with the best chance of a shower or thunderstorm during the afternoon hours, high 87 to 91. On Wednesday, intervals of clouds and sun with a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm, high 89 to 93. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound at DIY only $4.99. Plus DIY has the largest selection of mobile home parts and accessories anywhere. From carpet to doors, get the DIY supplies you need for less. The DIY Home Center Outlet. We are your building material closeout store. 2191 Northwest 10th Street, just two miles east of I-75. Friday, May 29th, kicks off the second annual Ocala Bike Fest. It starts at Harley-Davidson of Ocala, where you'll find vendors, beer, food. It starts at 11 a.m. with a live DJ till 3 and live music from 3 to 7. Then Saturday starts off at Ocala Indian with a poker run at 10.30 a.m. It all ends up at ARC's main campus on Mayor Camp Road, where you'll find bike games, 50-50 drawing, beer, and live music by the Blues Busters, Rusted Steel, and more. The best barbecue restaurants and food trucks in town are going to be there competing for the title of the Ocala Bike Bike Fest's best barbecue, and most importantly, the chance drawing for the hardest decision you'll ever have to make. A brand new Harley or a brand new Indian? That's right. This year's winner will choose between the Harley or the Indian. Indian or the Harley? The 112-year battle continues. Which bike will go home with the lucky winner? The public is welcome to all events. No motorcycles needed. Come out, have fun, and help a great cause all at the same time. Friday and Saturday, May 29th and 30th. For more information, visit OcalaBikeFest.com. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Who doesn't love heading out on the boat with a family, hitting the ATV trails with friends, or blazing new stretches of highway with riding buddies? Your toys are your ticket to outdoor fun. At the McDonald Allstate Agency, we get to know you and help make sure you have all the right coverages. Plus, when you bundle your coverage for your car and your home with your boat, motorcycle, RV, or more, you can save up to 30%. So call the McDonald Allstate Agency today at 622-2333 or stop by one of our two Ocala locations at Cala Hills or the Jasmine Square Plaza. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. 
All right, uh, 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Stephen Yaffa is on the phone with us. He, in addition to his other credentials, is an author, and he's got this very interesting book called Grain of Truth, which is what we're focusing on, The Real Case for and Against Wheat and Gluten. And real quick, I wanted to point something out, that when you go to uh, Google and you look, go to Google Maps, for example, and you ask, how do you get from point A to point B, right? It'll give you a choice. Like, do you want to take a car there? Or do you want to walk there? Do you want a bicycle there, right? And, and the, the book is similar to that, the book Grain of Truth, because if you want to be gluten-free, it gives you kind of a directions on how to do that. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you don't care about being gluten-free, it kind of gives you some information about that, too. So you kind of you covered all of us, I think, in the book, Stephen. Well, I, um, I, you know, it's hard, it's hard to make sure that you're, you know, customized to everybody's needs, but I gave it a shot. You know, one of the interesting things about being a journalist is you start from square one, in my case, where you know absolutely nothing, and you get into something because, in my case, my wife came home and uh, reported that she had a gluten neck, which uh, she found out from a body worker who told her that, that he couldn't touch her, her neck because it was inflamed. All the way through what? The, the end. <laughs> was it red? Was it what? irritated looking? Did you? Th- I mean, what was your reaction to that? Uh, I looked up and I waited for the punchline to the joke. <laughs> 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 we have no interest in food fads, zero. So, you know, any kind of food fad, really, never never have, never will. So I'm waiting. Well, I can't say never have because she wound up uh, taking it seriously enough to stop eating gluten. And that got me on the oh. uh, saying, whoa, 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 what's going on here? You know, all, all of a sudden, these, these pretenders show up in our, in our cupboard, like, you know, things with tapioca flour and oh, man. <laughs> all that stuff in them that are gluten-free. It's like changing your religion. They're, they're trying no, to change. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that's kind of like what got me, uh, you know, but I didn't go in with uh, a strong a prejudice one way or another. I went in to find out how much of this is based on fact and how much science is out there that really supports this and how much of it is pure, uh, unadulterated opinion that really has nothing to do with reality. So that was, you know, like a journalist, you really, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a good excuse to snoop. But, um, you know, you, it's easy to get in over your head and then figure out how to get out of it because when you start reading all these scientific clinical journals, which is where all this stuff really, you know, is, is checked out, um, it helps to have friends who can help you untangle it. So did that prompt your research into sourdough bread as to why you feel it's, it's really better for you? It did. In fact, there's a lot of studies going on in Italy, uh, not so much in the United States, in which, um, and uh, this was the real discovery of my book, um, and uh, there are a couple of chapters on it that people can read in more detail, but essentially what happens when you long ferment wheat uh, and when you sprout it is that you really start to pre-digest it one way or another, and one of the effects of that long fermentation means uh, fermenting something over two days as opposed to doing everything from start to finish in four hours, which is what an industrial bakery does with bread. So when you start to long ferment, which is what um, artisan bakers do uh, uh, with a sourdough starter, that breaks down these gluten molecules into very digestible small uh, strings of amino acid called peptides. That, that makes life a lot easier for anybody who has gluten issues. You, you know what you're going to do? It was when we had a guest who was talking about, um, and this is the power of radio, and, and I'm sure because you're on other stations as well, but so I'm not trying to say this one station, but we had a guest one time who talked about uh, coconut water, the benefits of coconut water. Mm-hmm. I never heard of coconut water before, but next thing I know, every store has got coconut water. Exactly. So, yeah. so what's going to happen? <laughs> you, you know how, many, <laughs> you know how much sourdough bread you're helping to sell? You <laughs> <laughs> you, it, it's it's that's that's what happens with these interviews. I believe that people will say, "Oh, well, now when I go to Subway, do they offer that as an option? The sourdough bread, one of the uh, sub." Subway off options? I don't recall that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be, but you know, there's a difference. And by the way, I don't know. I think someone know is, a, is an option. And, and I just call to everybody's attention that, you know, spraying a little bit of acid powder into bread at the end of a short fermentation, which is what some of these commercial breads do, has nothing to do with authentic sourdough. Oh, uh, okay. You have to be aware that there's, you know, uh, we have technology at our, to our advantage these days, but sometimes it turns around and bites us. Oh, so you got to go to an actual baker uh yeah go to a baker for bakery sure. have a whole foods right. around where you live 
check it out. There'll be some artists and bakers there. Go, to, you know, just look at the on the internet. You'll find somebody doing it. For artists sure. and bakers. That just sounds so good, doesn't it? <laughs> so when I, I remember somebody trying to persuade me to not eat bread anymore, and they said, well, "You know what you're eating?" You remember, and they would say, "You remember the paste you made in kindergarten?" Mm-hmm. That's right. It's exactly the same thing. That's why it sticks to you. It's so bad for you. And I said, "Well, it doesn't taste like that paste." No, it did stick to you. In fact, Larry, one of the <laughs> reasons there are so many conditioners in bread. If you look at the ingredients in commercial bread, you're going to find things you've never heard of, and they're all chemicals. And the reason that they're chemicals is that they have to get that paste to slide down. Uh, when you start thinking about making dough and getting it sliding, sliding down troughs into the various um, kinds of vehicles that take it from one place to another and have it baked, you can't have a bakery operating if the dough sticks halfway down, right? So these are really lubricants for the bread. They have much more to do with making the bread work with machines than they have to do with the bread working with our, our systems. And uh, that's why you go to those kneading conferences to check that's out exactly, all of exactly. that? I'm also to have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> you run into people who are making fabulous pizzas and all these things that are great. I mean, you know, it's a learning process. And I, I, I'm a winemaker, too. Uh, fortunately, living in Northern California, I've had my own commercial Pinot Noir. So I'm kind of a hands-on guy. And, and you run into trouble doing that. But I have to say, I've been making homemade sourdough now for two years. Um, I dropped 10 pounds without trying while I was doing it, eating it three times a week. And that's what got my wife off of being non-gluten she noticed i was losing weight and said hey what are you doing i said i don't know i'm just eating my own bread <laughs> wow. well did she lose her gluten neck did that finally go yeah, away she lost, oh, her gluten her neck never changed <laughs> one way or another. all that happened was she dropped five pounds which she uh, we call the final five because she said it's the last five pounds that women are always trying to lose well, and good uh, for so, her I put the recipe in my book. And they always, they always point to Paris or France in general. They say they, they do wine and, and bread all the time. Yeah, right. exactly. And, and, and yet, and that those are supposed to be, well, nobody says wine is bad for you. Everybody says bread is bad for yeah. you. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, what, what, about, what about the genetically modified um, fad right now? Are we going overboard with that? Uh, we may be going overboard with that. I have, I have, uh, by the way, I, I really want to point out to your listeners, there is no genetically modified wheat in the United States. Oh, there isn't. Don't worry about GMO wheat. And that really defines any kind of grain or any kind of, uh, anything really where an external um, element has been en- uh, introduced into the DNA. Um, uh, for example, almost all the soy and corn that's not organic in this country now is genetically modified. Um, but wheat, there's no, none, and part of the reason is that no country will accept our uh, wheat if it were genetically modified. Not, uh, Asia, Japan, and Europe ban GMO foods, so, and, and our, our farmers sell a lot of... Uh, uh, isn't so that interesting? Market, yeah, but the, um, you know, there's a whole issue about whether GMO should be labeled, uh, and I think you know, people have a right to know whether or not on the label of anything... The, the uh, ingredients of sure. the Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because those seeds won't uh, flower and they're reproduced then, and they don't want to be surprised. That's right. For sure. I did, a book on, I did a book on cotton, <clears throat> um, the uh, biography of a revolutionary fiber, and one of the things I really get into in that book is how uh, Monsanto deals with all of that and how they lease seeds to uh, cotton farmers who, who are prevented from actually buying the seeds and they're all GMO seeds, and I think it's a contemporary version of sharecropping. Oh, you never wow. Own yeah. your, own your own stuff. But, you know, it gets complicated because, um, uh, you know, you've got to figure out what, you know, what your relationship is with, with the uh, company that's provi- providing your seeds. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, okay, I have a copy of the book, Grain of Truth. I would like to give it away. Call me if you want your name put on it. It'll be waiting for you here at the station. The rest of us have to go buy it. And uh, Stephen Yaffa is who you would look up on Amazon and all the other booksellers. Uh, Y-A-F-A is how you spell Stephen's last name. And Grain of Truth is the book. Do you have a website for yourself, Stephen? I do. It's grain of tr- uh, grainoftruthbook.com. Okay. And it will take you to my site, and you'll be able to um, order the book there. And um, I don't think you'll find it heavy reading. I made it, you know, as personal as possible because it's, you know, when you write a book, in my case, you think, well, is this a book I actually want to sit down and read myself? So I kept that in mind. And I hope your uh, listeners enjoy it. I'd love to hear from them, um, get their take on it one way or another. All right, let me give this one away real quick. Come on, you've got the book. Who's this? Uh, <laughs> Ken Smith. Ken Smith? 
Yes. Okay, Ken, you've got it. You know where we are? You know where we are? Yep. Wow, big echo. All right, you've got it. It'll be waiting for you. <laughs> uh, Stephen, thank you for being on the air with us today. That was fun. Larry and Robert, it was my pleasure. Thanks. All right, we'll be, we'll be right back. This is WLCA Ocala. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Law enforcement on alert as they guard the scene of a deadly biker brawl in Waco, Texas. Police are especially careful after they got word of a threat against themselves. Law enforcement had already been alerted to tensions between rival gangs, the Bandidos and the Cossacks. Fox Radio's Evan Brown. In the fight against ISIS, Iraqi commanders bracing for another ground offensive in Ramadi. Several thousand uh, Iranian-backed Shiite militia forces have also joined Iraqi forces now east of Ramadi trying to gear up, but uh, Iraqi commanders say that they're running low on reinforcements, they're calling for more reinforcements, and they're also running low on supplies.